Hello, all sentient beings, and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast, where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers. On this special episode, we've got the Friday and Sunday TFCon Baltimore Podcast Roundtable panels from back in October 2021. Featuring podcasters from the More Than Meets the Ear podcast, Radio Free Cybertron, and of course, Empire of Rust and Transmissions. Today is Wednesday, December 29th, 2021, and this is episode 466 of Transmissions. Con Baltimore. How's everyone doing? All right. Yeah, we're here to kick off the show. We are a bunch of podcasters, <laughs> so if I don't know if you listen, if anyone listens to Transformers podcasts, there are a metric ton of Transformers podcasts <laughs> online. So uh, there's lots to choose from. Uh, I am Charles, also known as Big C. I am a host of the Transmissions podcast, and uh, we've got lots, a bunch of other podcasters here as well. So introduce yourself. I'm Josh. I'm from More Than Meets the Ear, where we review Transformers Cybertron, a show that only I seem to care about. <laughs> we also sing songs, because half of us are theater kids. <laughs> I'm a diecast. I'm a cast member on Radio Free Cybertron. Some of you may know the podcast's been around for over 20 years, uh, so long, long history. Uh, and this is probably the first TFCon I've been to in over two years because of the pandemic. So I want to thank Colin and all the TFCon crew for, uh, you know, putting this back out there. Uh, It's great to finally be at another TFCon again. It's the first TFCon anyone's been to in two years. Yeah. I'm Alan Magnus. I'm the podcast friend, as I like to call myself. I've been on a bunch of the podcasts. I do not have my own. I am the one who organized this because no one realized that no one did. <laughs> so um, I've been into Transformers since they came out. And uh, this is my third TFCon. Chicago and uh, Toronto have been my other ones. Um, I don't know what else to. <laughs> what else we can go to? Um, did uh, everyone here stay for the panel that was previous? Did they, when did that end, the, the PulseCon thing? Oh, the PulseCon thing ended at, uh, I think it was around 2 o'clock, roughly. Okay, so it's obviously they have not been standing here this whole time. <laughs> and I am sweaty and disgusting. Uh, I will have a panel uh, of um, as well if anyone wants to see me tomorrow. I will be cosplaying, so that'll be fun. Um, you want to start the excitement here? <laughs> well, I mean, let's 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 talk about what's going on, uh, you know, today with PulseCon, and then we'll talk about what's happening at TFCon. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, Hasbro <laughs> Hasbro decided to, you know, I guess uh, <laughs> they they thought uh, TFCon picked a good weekend, so they decided to put on their own show as well for uh, <laughs> for PulseCon. <laughs> But we're we're all tra- T- TFCon is all Transformers all weekend. PulseCon only got Transformers for like what two hours today, and that's it. <laughs> so uh, so I mean I don't did everyone see the reveals for PulseCon this uh, that came out today? So uh, yeah so uh, Diecast, what did you think of uh, all the cool uh, new toys that they revealed for Transformers Legacy? Uh, I think I think it's funny because you know we've we've been in this G1 continuum, and uh, now they've decided to go to other characters throughout the Transformers history. But they confirmed today that they're going to g one <laughs> every character, uh, which you can see if you look at the RC, which may not have been visible on my little on my phone as I was driving the TFCon watching PulseCon, which is not recommended, but that's what I did. <laughs> if I almost hit anyone, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're, they're g one uh, So the, I believe the Transformers Legacy slogan... Uh, I'm going to announce right here. They didn't announce it. They called me, talked to me, said it was okay. Um, the new slogan is now till all RG1. <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I like the products that they showed today. The bulkhead is probably the most disappointing to me. It's my favorite. It's your favorite? Yeah, I, I love that stupid looking thing. Yeah, it, it, you know what it's obviously meant to be, right? Uh, there's like three different things people were saying. There's a like GoBot. And it, it's the, uh, I believe it's the Beast Hunters Optimus Prime uh, is what that mold is actually supposed to be. Pre-tool. Yeah, this is the, the, the pre-tool to the actual you know, that they made the Optimus Prime first, and they said, okay, let's do a retool as Bumblebee. As Bumblebee. Everything's Bumblebee. <laughs> uh, they did the retool as Bulkhead, but they released the Bulkhead first. So... Yeah, yeah. Were there any Bumblebees? No. No, Bumblebee. no. no. It, there will be. Uh, that's got to be Wave 2. I mean, you always have to have a Prime in Wave 1. So we got Laser Prime... Uh, you know, he's, he's the leader. And then, uh, yeah, so Bumblebee's got to be a wave, too, along with the Megatron. We didn't see Megatron yet. And that's like an unspoken rule also is, uh, you know, every, at the start of every new Transformers trilogy, we need a Megatron, we need a Prime, we need a Bumblebee, and a Starscream, probably. They did have a T-shirt of Megatron, so I'm assuming that that's just wave, too. Yeah. They don't usually do that unless they're playing in something funny. Uh, Kickback already sold out, and Drag Strip already sold out on Pulse, so I'm assuming those will be G1ers. Drag Strip. Now they're doing a combiner, which is the first combiner since Combiner Wars, which was two trilogies ago. Um, if if the rumors are true, uh, Motormaster is going to be the Commander class figure. So probably go like third party style with uh, the trailer being the body for uh, Menasaur. Uh, so it's going to be three deluxes or four deluxes and Motor, Motor Master as your commander class figure for the year. I don't even see any combined reports on this thing. What's All that? I see is yellow. It, yeah, it looks, like, <laughs> it looks like it's one of the... Uh, the early 2000s like customizer where they just use Unicron's crotch. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like because I don't see any component ports on this. this guy at all. I mean, it's it's a good looking figure. I, I it's it's definitely different than the Combiner Wars figure, which is what I'm most appreciative of. Is it's not like the you know just a slight redesign of that figure. Yeah. And uh, one thing I like about Combiner Wars is it's Scramble City. I don't think these are going to be all the new at all. These are like anti-Scramble City combiners. Because uh, if, if Motor Master is the main piece, assuming everybody else is probably going to be their main piece. I don't know how to but it's... Yeah, non-Scramble City is... I, I think Scramble City, although it was a good idea, doing it throughout the entire line kind of hurt the figures. I'm just glad that they aren't redoing it. Like, yeah. They're doing a different method. They're doing more of, a, of the third party version. They're trying to battle that. Yeah, they're trying to find a better way, you know, by using that commander cl class price point, they're trying to find a better way to make a combiner within the constructs of Hasbro and their, you know, retail products. Because obviously that's something third party doesn't have to worry about. They don't have to worry about, you know, retail products. These products are all pretty much straight to consumer, even though you get them from... Price point. They can make it whatever price they need. Yeah. So, what, uh, what did you think, Charles, of the, the reveals? Anything stand out to you? I am seeing most of them for the first time, literally right now. That's why I've got my phone on. I'm like, what, what, what happened? What? I saw them at a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the figures are all, uh, I mean, they're okay. I mean, they're, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's always good to, to refresh figures that, that you haven't seen before. What, I, what I'm most interested in is actually um, the exclusive, the reformatted Galvatron, but not interested in the Galvatron itself, but all the little, little bits and pieces that come with it. So how many people here uh, got uh, HasLab Unicron uh, this year? 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Charles, are you surprised? <laughs> I did too. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I mean, so all those little figures that came with that come with the reformatted Galvatron go great with would go great with my Haslab Unicron. So I think that's what they call them. Yeah, yeah. Not use slug, but they call them slug. Okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the that I did. You, did you get the? You have no interest in the actual figure then. Fifty dollar. Yeah. Not really, no. <laughs> this is this is where I'm different than everybody out here. Uh, unless you are, well, uh, I love this stupid thing. But I, <laughs> I, the day that the, the Megatron Rides came up, that did the same thing. For, I was like, this is so. <laughs> it's me. They're making toys for me. Yeah, it's just you. <laughs> uh, yeah, the extra parts that is annoying because they said I actually went back and looked. What Hasbro said was is they will be rolling these out with exclusive figures for the next few years. That's what their text said. Mm. Not everything is a Galvatron uh, figure not everyone's going to want. Mm. That's a little different than what they were, they were going for. I'm glad to get it all at one shot, though. You know, I, I'm fine with it, too. Give it, give it to me now. I'll put it on display with my, my Unicron collection. And it's $4 more. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's and if you really don't want the figure, find someone who wants it. Because uh, not everyone's going to want the little tiny figures because they don't have a Unicron to go with it. There, there's definitely a split market on that. It's the mm -hmm. same with the, uh, the Beasts things from Amazon. You get a Beast and then you get a, a card. It's super easy to offload one or the other if you don't want both. So, uh, what else do we got here? And then uh, Beast Wars fans got a got a treat with the the you know some exclusive uh, behind the scenes stuff on the new movie Rise of the Beasts. So that's uh, that looks exciting. And uh, you know the the lead uh, actor Anthony Ramos uh, talked about his you know fan you know uh, love of Beast Wars of uh, being a Beast Wars kid. So yeah, those guys are a little younger than me. So you know, but I I still love Beast Wars. I didn't I didn't grow up with it. I was already, I was already in college and when Beast Wars came out, but. Uh, still love it, but uh, glad to see the younger fans are getting uh, getting their due now with uh, with Beast Wars and the 25th anniversary of Beast Wars. So that's. Uh, I feel like a lot of stuff is swan song, so they're like, "We're not doing Jim Lord anymore, so this is your last chance." <laughs> and then they'll do it again in like 10 years. Um, <laughs> speaking of Beast Wars, did you guys? You didn't watch that, did you? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I watched it. I was. Yeah, I watched it on YouTube <laughs> because I was not. I think I was like two years old when it was actually airing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know my parents. <laughs> but uh, speaking of toys, if we're gonna start talking about some uh, TFCon stuff, we got uh, two exclusives or one exclusive and one early release slash. Exclusive. Uh, we have the New Age Walther P38. This is like a black Megatron uh, that's available from the Chosen Prime. I think they're actual home of. They're they're limited like 500, I believe. And then uh, fr uh, Toy Dojo booth also has the reformatted Rung, which is uh, they call it Mentis. R49, and it's actually the 10th anniversary of the reformatted line. And this particular figure is only available with all these accessories on Planet Steel Express and hasn't even shipped yet. So if you want this figure in this uh, shared exclusive, I guess we should use Hasbro terminology. It's a, it's a shared exclusive, uh, but it's an early release here at TFCon. So... Anyone picking that. up the exclusives? <laughs> I want that wrong. I need, but I, I don't have the I don't have the premium ticket, so I gotta <laughs> I gotta figure out if there are gonna be any left. There there are still some left. I saw a guy with the uh, with with just a whole stack of boxes of them. Oh, okay. So I'm guessing uh, that size box box. How, how much was that? Yeah, maybe you're at least thirty left. <laughs> Uh, so I got to get up real early that? tomorrow. Huh? The Megatron is seventy-five, and the Rung, I believe, is one twenty-five. 
So if you're paying your card, there's tax. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, these are usually at a TF Con, I, this is probably a, as a result of COVID, uh, you usually have a couple more exclusives, but uh, this is what we got this year just because of uh, shipping and everything. You don't want to sit on them either. It's so sad. Like, if you want stuff for Christmas, you better get it now. Yep. <laughs> Everyone's saying, get it now, get it now. Yep. So TFCon is a perfect time to shop for everything you need for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, the, main, that's the, the main activity at TFCon is finding deal. I mean, uh, the on the show floor all, all day tomorrow and Sunday, there, there will be lots of... You know, lots of stuff to look at and, and, and find, you know, both the official Hasbro stuff and third-party stuff. Of course, also, uh, you know, if you're hanging out in the hotel uh, in the evenings, a lot of people have parts parties in their hotel room. So, you know, if you bring a lot of people, sometimes, you know, bring their own toys to sell. If they're, not, if they're not in the dealer room, but they just, you know, want to trade or work out deals and, you know, you know tra trade or have fun with, you know, all, you know, all the big the bringing together the big Transformers fan community here. And so, you know, it, there's lots of stuff, uh, lots of, uh, you know, stuff to go on, going on this weekend. So, yeah. So did you, uh, did you guys get pre-orders in? Did you pre-order anything today from? All of it. Oh. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> Just to be safe. Yeah, yeah it, 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 you got to. I mean. I got, I got the Ravage 2-pack, the, um, the, you know, the Beast Wars fun. Ravage. Like I'm not really interested in any of the any of the stuff they've revealed for Legacy so far, but this Laser Optimus Prime has me interested in the eventual Scourge repaint. I want a Toxic Prime. <laughs> I, I want that. I've wanted that forever. I want the the back piece to be just clear and Ghostbustery, uh, <laughs> Toxic Avenger style. The the trailer better be back metal or I'm I'm out. Yeah. And uh, did you get the Ravage? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I Ravage. Pre order. I was surprised that it was still available, like they're going to ship it this week. Yeah, that, that was the one I was a little on the fence with. Uh, I really price don't have. Plus. Yeah, the price is a little high. Um, I can't tell if it's a Voyager or Deluxe because I've heard it was a retool off of Cheetor, and I've heard other people say it's a retool off of Tri Tigertron. It, so it looks bigger than the I'm confused because on the on the on the panel today they did say it was remolded off a of Cheetor. But I don't know if they meant that was remolded off a of Cheetor and upscaled like they did with Tigertron. Do they have pictures of it with the cassette? Because the cassette's a G one, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I think it's just the G one cassette. They have plenty of those. I'm actually going to look. Because if they have a that, you could do the old uh, micrometer check. Now, all they have is, is cut pictures, not it. Oh, there's one. I remember when... Uh, DJ Ronan, when he gets his. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we got... Like, we got leaked pictures of, of this Ravage a good while ago. And if I remember correctly, I, the feet were very clearly Cheetor's feet and not the feet we've seen later on Tigatron. So I'm thinking it's probably in the Cheetor size range. It looks like Cheetor on here in the packaging. Mm. Yeah, so that seems a little cool high. diorama for his ship, you know, yeah, from the agenda. The <laughs> so he, I think you can put the thing in there, can't you? The cassette? The cassette? I, yeah. yeah. I, that's, that's the one I did pre-order just because, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of uh, that crossover from Beast Wars. I think, you know, that was when, when they tied it directly into G1. You know, that was, uh, you know, that was my... Uh, not, Cemented my love of of Beast Wars and connecting it to G One. So you know, wanted to any Transformers wanted to pick that Prime up. fans here. No. How how are your stuff not sold out? All the G One stuff sold out. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so so I have a question because we kind of talked about Unicron for a minute, but we didn't talk about the other Haslab Transformers oh. product, uh, Star Saber. How many people actually pre-ordered Star Saber? Or I guess back the project. It's not really a pre-order. <laughs> it's a pre-order. But yeah, yeah, uh, that was very successful. And 
I, I mean, I think it shows the strength of the brand just being that that is a Japanese or Asian market, you know, figure. Uh, the show was obviously uh, in the Asian market also. So to get that backed in the U.S., uh, they did throw, you know, the, the other pre-orders overseas into the totals. But uh, without the U.S., I don't think it would have made it. So... Yeah, I, my cousin texted me. He pre-ordered, or he did uh, Unicron the day one. He texted me. He's like, "What the hell is this? Uh, victory <laughs> something or other?" And I'm like, "He's the leader of the Autobots." Like years after, and he's like, "I don't care about that." I'm like, <laughs> "Okay." Uh, I, I prefer I, my Star Sabers to be religious zealots who are intent <laughs> on murdering people. I guess. Um, it's a Transformer with a sword before they all had swords. I mean, what Dinobots did. But, um, I don't know. I, I love that. It's the prequel to Brave. And, and, or was it Brave? Victory? No, no. Zone? The guy who designed it was like a Gundam designer who then went on to Brave. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. in one of the bio things. Um, so I just I just love that that figure uh, in general, and I've always wanted one, but they're huge. Like I don't know why that thing is so huge. Um, I had my issues. I I, I sent you numerous actually uh, <laughs> things about that because we were both pretty angry with how they handled Unicron, you know, what whatever that is. So I just backed it on the last day out of spite. My one vote was very late. <laughs> I have an hour-long YouTube video, if anyone wants to watch that, <laughs> of me ranting about how they are doing this all wrong. Sir, this is a Wendy's. Yeah, sir, this is a Wendy's. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much exactly what it is. Me, old man screams at Cloud. Uh, that was me. Uh, I was not pleased with that, but what are you going to do? They're their own company. Um, so we haven't heard much from, from you. Uh, what, what, what exactly is your, your podcast you do? Uh, you... Go ahead and tell everybody like in a little more detail because I it's a new podcast. I mean, I don't really. Oh, you're addressing me. Sorry. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I missed like the first couple of words hiding behind the mask. I, uh, yeah. So basically, I ran after uh, Iacon Online uh, back in January. I think it was of this year. Uh, I messaged a couple of people who were uh, leading panels on that and roped them in, whom I had never met before, and we all started talking about doing a podcast on the TV show that I grew up watching, which was Transformers Cybertron, uh, the last show of the Unicron trilogy. It's the one with the very stark contrast between the very CGI robots and the very hand-drawn animated humans, and we started going episode by episode through that series, and... I'm the one who still loves the show, but everyone else is just kind of laughing at it the whole time, and it's a, it's a, it's a very fun bit of uh, enjoying the bizarre accent choices that the voice actors have yes. made for these characters. Uh, we've decided that uh, Thundercracker and Jetfire are secretly lovers. <laughs> so that's fun. One's, one's got a very thick southern accent, and the other has a very uh, thick Australian accent. So two, so two of my other... Hi, microphone. <laughs> Two of my other co-hosts impersonate them and do back and forth nonsense. It's quite entertaining. Yeah, I, I talked to one of your, your co-hosts. That's why I was glad you showed up. Um, it's a different podcast than what we used, usually get. It's usually G1, G1, G1. You might throw Beast Wars in there. You rarely get one that is hyper-focused on a Unicron trilogy. Uh, one. Like you didn't start with Armada. We did you, not. You, John, you just went straight straight to Cybertron, which I, in all honesty, you do you. That is that is what you're supposed to do with the podcast. You don't cater to your your, your fans. They find you. Uh, that's how I found the other two podcasts that are here. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we, you bump into them every once in a while because probably what well, you guys are probably the longest running on uh, Ready Free Cybertron. The last one that I've started listening to. <laughs> so, it, like, I've been Transformers all this time, and I just ran into you like a year ago, so it, 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 we don't pay for advertisement, as you can't tell. 
All right, I just wanted him to introduce himself a little more since everyone's probably heard from you guys every year of this podcast panel. I'm assuming we're just, this is going to be on uh, transmissions. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we're recording it right now, so we'll make the yeah. files available so everyone can share them on their respective uh, podcast feeds uh, if they want. So we'll have. Uh, yeah, so everyone can listen. I don't do, do people listen to podcasts here, or specifically Transformers <laughs> podcasts? So, was <laughs> uh, the number one Derek's there? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what are you guys looking forward to this weekend? Is there a guest, a panel, anything? I'm just I'm just happy to be with people be with again. People. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> So yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of uh, on on my podcast. We have a, a, you know, several different people. There's one guy who's really into the toys. That guy is not me, but I still, I, I do enjoy the toys. But I'm more into like Transformers lore and stories and comics and media and everything. But uh, you know, I, I do enjoy picking up, you know, toys that represent some of that media, like that rung over there. That's a that's a cool figure from the, the Transformers comics. And um, I, I you know, believe you did the the tongue out thirsty emoji <laughs> on the, uh, the the Discord. Yeah. So yeah, that's but, all you need to know. Yeah, and and uh, you know there there are some cool guests uh, here. So you know Greg Berger, Grimlock, uh, Gary Chalk, Optimus Primal, and, and um, uh, we have a new a new voice. I for, I forget the gentleman's name, but the voice of um, of Dead End from the newest cartoon, Cyberverse. Mm-hmm. So that's cool to have a you know a, one of the newer voice yeah. actors here. Hal Rail is here, another G1 voice Venus, actor. Venus Terzo. Is Venus Terzo from from, yeah. B, from Beast Wars. Yeah, Black Arachnia. And uh, then Bob Budiansky, who is kind of the grandfather of, of all the Transformers uh, stories and and lore and history. I mean, the guy who basically created uh, almost all the profiles of the original uh, Transformers, Generation 1 Transformers from the ground up, you know. He, uh, yeah, he did Freedom as a Right. Yeah, he, he did. I mean, he, he tells us, I'm sure he'll tell the story in his panel. Maybe I, should, maybe I, shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't ruin the story <laughs> for, for those who are going to go see his panel. But yeah, I mean, he, he's kept copious notes of, of all his work from back then, so he always has, you know, really all the stuff that he, that he worked on back in the day. So, like, basically... All the personalities that you loved from the original Autobots and Decepticons came out of his brain, and so it's it's really cool to to always He's have him here and, and tell stories Larry about Hama that. Of, yeah, Larry Hama did the same for yeah G.I. Joe. For G.I. Joe. Larry Hama of the Transformers, yeah, or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, what were you looking at? You looking to pick anything up, or you just just that wrong? That wrong. That I'm wrong. really looking for that wrong. <laughs> Uh, we might have to work something out. And uh, those those third party <laughs> legends figures, the, the small uh, you know third party uh, legend size figures. I'm always looking for those. You, guys. you think it's a fair <laughs> trade for what you brought me? <laughs> the Ollie's knockoff. Uh, <laughs> it's ready uh, for you. I got it here yeah, for it's you. Good. It's, yeah. it's like a self transforming <laughs> motorcycle that turns into a robot, but it's like what what scale is that even? Like uh, one tenth scale. It's like the weirdest scale yeah. I've ever seen. It's huge. Um, what scale about you, Josh? is an illusion. <laughs> what about you, Josh? What are you here for? Well, uh, kind of echoing what Charles said. Being at a TFCon again after all of the madness that was 2020 is just so wonderful for me. This is like my one time a year that I, or two times a year, depending upon when it happens, that I actually socialize with other humans. <laughs> And this is also the first time I've met uh, Susan and Trish, two of my co-hosts, in person. And that's honestly the thing I was looking forward to most, just hanging out with these people who I've been chatting with over Zoom calls and constantly wondering whether Trish's internet is still functioning. (laughs) Actually hearing her speak coherent set set that we can hear what she's saying is wonderful. RTXV had that recently. <laughs> but also, I'm very much on the hunt for uh, Japanese Galaxy Force figures. If you are selling them, uh, come find me. I will probably buy them. <laughs> I do not have Japanese ones. Uh, <laughs> cool. And uh, diecast. Oh, I'm I'm definitely here to you know uh, see you guys. Uh, I like being around and talking to other Transformers fans, uh, getting different perspectives. Everyone likes different things. Some people like the media. Some people like the toys more. 
Some people like the comics more. Um, it, it's just to experience all of it, uh, which, you know, sometimes I only focus on some of the things that I like, but to see other other areas of Transformers is, is always awesome. The dealer room is always great. Uh, the panels are always great. Uh, it's just... The panels for Transformers are way better than most other panels from other conventions. I can attest to that. Anime ones are okay, but some of these, it's... Woof. I mean, all the... And everyone who's, who's worked on Transformers uh, that I've met, I'm sure there's a rare occasion out there that... But everyone is always so nice. Yeah, they're all nice, and they're not trying to sell you something. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, Greg Berger. I've had, I've had, you know, conversations with him. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 been, I'm happy to see uh, Gary Chalk. Mm-hmm. Gary Chalk. I've talked to him uh, all I mean, the these guys are all super awesome. Yeah. Did, any, did anybody else see Gary Chalk earlier today? No. Mm-mm. The the movie The Predator was on in the hotel room, <laughs> and and it, I, I'm just hanging out with Trish, and I see him come on the screen like. It's scary. Yeah, yeah, he sneaks in there. He's in a also, lot of uh, stuff. Also, Sonic the Hedgehog. He's one of the generals in Sonic the Hedgehog. Too. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's in a bunch. Um, oh, let me let me. Uh, I've, in addition to the uh, those guests, we got to mention the comic artists who are here. So, uh, Josh Burcham, who did the art for the first six issues of the new Beast Wars comic, uh, he's here. So. If you are reading the new Beast Wars comic and maybe you brought your issues and want to get them signed, he's here. Uh, Andrew Griffith, who's done a lot of Transformers comics, uh, you know, in, uh, for IDW. And Livio Ramondelli, who's also a great Transformers artist uh, who's done comics here. So they're, they're all here, uh, and you can you get stuff signed from the, for them. And, and they will sign books for free. So, I mean, you can Some buy stuff from them, and they'll sign for free. stuff, too, depending on... I know the artists, have a lot of those do custom mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Stuff. Is Moylan here this time? I don't, I don't think. I don't know. I don't yeah, think. He's Canadian, so we yeah, probably couldn't get past the border. Well, he could fly here. I oh, mean, yeah. definitely, definitely check out Artist Alley because there are people making stuff for Transformers. That's absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. I know there's, and I apologize. I don't know if they're at this show, but there's there's someone who makes like Transformers like stuffed animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, yeah. There's. There's pins that I know are going to be available. I saw them on Twitter uh, that are really nice. They're like wooden pins, and they I think they come in a set. Uh, there's just so many things that the fans, uh, you know, the people who are talented in the arts, which I'm not one of them, uh, but there's so many people that make Transformers-related items that you can find here. It's just that that's another thing that always amazes me, even though I've seen it, you know, at all the other conventions, it, it's always a shock to see what they can make. Yeah, yeah, I, I make stuff as well. Uh, I don't have much to bring because I keep selling it on Etsy before I could bring it here. I try to make stock and it doesn't happen. I make little stands and stuff. Um, and Oh, and what, one more person I forgot, uh, Rick Alvarez, who actually worked on Transformers brand for a lot of time. Actually, I think he worked during the Transformers Prime era, so he's responsible for a lot of the align continuity uh, stuff you know when when Hasbro was doing that about you know 10 years ago so yeah I've been to a couple of Rick Alvarez's panels and he has some really interesting insight onto like the behind the scenes of either the story elements of Transformers Prime and how the series was conceived and where uh, different ways that at one point season three was going to be about something completely different or on like how the toy design process happens because he was involved in all that stuff I'm really excited for that panel. I've forgotten that was happening because I haven't looked at my schedule in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really interesting, like, when you're bringing that up, uh, if, you, if you listen to what, you know, the designers say and the brand team says, every time Hasbro has these events, and, and I'm lucky enough to actually go to the Hasbro events pre-COVID and ask questions and speak with the designers and the brand team managers and... Um, <laughs> They were actually hinting at a Unicron for the end of the uh, the last trilogy. So I guess that was that was Scorponok that we got at the end there. Um, Power of the Primes. Yeah. yeah, Power of the Primes. That's that's what it was. They were they were actually hinting at a Unicron 
tightened back then um, and it didn't happen because and I guess that's why they probably scrapped it because they couldn't do what they wanted in that price point which is how the HasLab came to be. Um, so there, there, there's things that if you listen every time they talk, uh, their plans do change as it goes down the line. Um, and, and you can kind of get an idea that behind the scenes stuff that, that happened. Like I have a question, if anyone saw the Target Origins Bumblebee that came out in the in the what's their Bumblebee line called? Yeah, bu yeah. Buzzworthy Bumblebee. Buzzworthy, Buzzworthy Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Collision of yeah, worlds if, if, or something like that. I'm, I'm looking. For, I'm still looking for that Origins Bumblebee. But you <laughs> see that said. Origins Bumblebee, and you're like, why was that not in Siege? Like yeah, that's yeah. the story yeah. I want to know the most uh, <laughs> that that I have written down in my notes for if I ever get to go to a live event again and talk to the Hasbro design team or the brand managers but yeah there's a lot of interesting behind the scenes stuff and Rick always has uh, from his time at Hasbro uh, just some great stories mm -hmm. yeah. so um, I guess that's uh, that's that's the con I mean uh, I'm here kind of representing um, Transformers Reanimated which is uh, I don't know if you know Yoshi he uh he unfortunately could not be here, nor could Greg, because he lives in Australia. Uh, I have been on there numerous times, as well as uh, most of the Autopod Decepticast, which none of them are in here. They are here, uh, they just aren't in the panel. Um, so if you see them around, say hi. You can see them as well at autopoddecepticast.com. Uh, you guys are just guests, right? You're not... Like you're not doing any panels or anything, are you? Uh, just the podcast panel. <laughs> yeah. Just this one. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah, yeah and just, we'll, uh, we close out the show uh, on Sunday afternoon at 4:30, so we're the last uh, panel at 4:30. If you're, you know, looking for something to do after the dealer room closes and you want to uh, hang out and, and talk about everything you got at the con, at the con, we'll, uh, you know, we'll come back. And... Especially if you're just you're itching for more. <laughs> come, come get some more. Yep. What you liked, what you didn't like, we'll we'll talk about it all. So. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited to be here as well for the same exact reasons, because this has been a terrible, terrible year for a lot of people, and uh, it's good to see some people who, who have an aligned interest. Uh, I am a cosplayer. I see we have, we have a sorry over there. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I see a jazz back there, too. There is a jazz, okay. My glasses are down so that I don't get fogged up, so I didn't even see you over there. <laughs> And we got a bumblebee over there. Yay. Yay! There we go. So come check me out in the vendor area tomorrow. I will be and there obnoxious. Is, there is a costume contest at 3 o'clock on uh, tomorrow, Saturday. So, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're interested in that, uh, yeah, go. There's usually a bunch of people there. They have, uh, I don't know if they have the same. Usually it's like two or three different categories. So... Mm -hmm. Mine doesn't fit any of those. So. And Charles, why don't you remind everyone, since you have it on your phone, where do we go to get the, uh, the schedule? Uh, you go to tfcon.com slash schedule. So very easy. Very easy to remember. Yeah, because uh, I, th I don't know if they're on the back like some day. They're, yeah, they're, they're, not, they're not handing out paper schedules. No yeah, paper schedules. It's all online. Yeah. Yeah, they don't want people passing that stuff around. Very COVID friendly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and money saving. Uh, very tree friendly. <laughs> and also, if you if you are interested in voice acting, uh, there is a live script audition and reading at five o'clock on uh, on Saturday. So you actually can get a chance to do some voice acting with actual real live voice actors. So that's that's always cool. Where they uh, they allow people to come up and audition, and then the voice actors will decide. They'll pick people. To uh, join them and, and do a you know do a uh, a live script reading with them, so that's that's really cool. Uh, so yeah, check that out too. Anyone else have anything they want to go over? Well, we have a little bit of time, right? What's yeah, we that? got like twenty minutes. Uh, <laughs> does anyone? I, I just from you know in the audience, is anyone? What are you guys excited about? Grimlock. Grimlock, Greg Burger. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice. Hall, Hall of Famer. <laughs> that happens here. Who is your metal husband? <laughs> Watch out. People do get married here. Or <laughs> Watch out. It's happened. Third party panel. Third party panel. Third party yeah. panel. I forgot that's about that. That's it's on been Sunday. So long. This, year. this exists, right? Like, wow. <laughs> it's been a while since we had a third party panel. I yeah. thank you for bringing that up. I am super excited. Uh, the other thing, I, I'm curious what kind of third party figures we're going to see in the dealer room as far as, as new stuff. You know, I want to, if there's going to be any surprise at anything in there that, like, uh, Robot Paradise, uh, Soundwave, if there. anyone has that in there. I mean, I know it, it's close. I don't know if it's out yet, but. Uh, I'm hoping for those turtles, the square turtles, Ninja Turtles. The square, yeah. Uh, cubes. There, there's what's that it's supposed to release next week but I'm wondering if anyone could have got it early that means people probably have it that sell it and there's no digital footprint here so <laughs> I, I would have got it early if I could have if I was a retailer I, I would get it early for here for, for the fans uh, although some of that stuff s- sells out we were talking about that in the line uh, with, uh, with a fan you know, about uh, fans' toys selling out within, like, seconds when it goes up on pre-order. And and uh, I actually just, I, I import the stuff direct from uh, overseas because it's it's a lot easier than trying to fight people to pre-order it. extra bucks for shipping versus, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it, it's definitely, uh, fans' toys is hard to get. Is that the Dinobots or... <laughs> They they had Dinobots, yeah. They're reissuing the them now. Uh, yeah, that was and the one everyone was complaining about because they were costing too much. Yeah, they're still hard to get too. It, it's uh, yeah. There's and and COVID doesn't you know with shipping and everything it does make anything better. Who is it? It's a uh, Planet X. I think has has got a, a an IDW uh, the Nick the Nick Roche style Grimlock coming out. And I think that one was scheduled to release in October 2021. So, hey, maybe that'll be here. Yeah, I heard, I, and I hope I can say this, and on, on the, you know, I'm not spreading rumors, but I heard there were going to be more exclusives, but, you know, because of shipping, they just didn't get here. So mm. that's why we have the exclusives that we do. They're in the Suez Canal <laughs> Along with everything else, yeah. Uh, off the coast of California. Yeah, off the coast of California. <laughs> it's not even the trucks. I think it's the people to unload the 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 uh, the, sh- the ships because they're actually so far out. They they have ships that can anchor if they're waiting to go into the port, uh, and it's unprecedented from the article I read that they actually have ships out there that can't even anchor. They're just floating in the ocean in a line waiting to come into the port. The ships have to wait over four hours and they even get loaded. Yeah. Wow. Yep. We need some more ports. I think that's what I'm So do your shopping here this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I said it before. If you see it, buy it. Do not ask questions. Uh, yeah, because uh, if you don't get it here this weekend, you probably won't get it till January. <laughs> I actually hope someone here has the Robeson. What's that? The Robeson, the uh, auto truck. Oh, oh, yeah. I, I saw a video on Twitter from someone who was here who had one. Uh, um, I, I mean, I feel with that figure that it's, you know, $750, and I would play with it for about a half an hour. And then it would sit for years. I just want to see it. Years. I literally hope they just have it out and I can yell at it. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's all I need to do. It's an amazing thing what they did, uh, but I don't know that I can justify. I think like 250 bucks of it is literally paying for the license and Peter Cullen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is the this is like the, the self-transforming Optimus Prime you guys yeah, are talking yeah, about. Yeah. Uh, the Kevin Smith... 
I mean, people yeah, complain about nice. Unicron. He is more expensive than Unicron. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think that's the wrong, uh, wrong convention, man. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like that, so fight me. <laughs> <laughs> what we really need is some Transformers NFTs because oh, I don't no. understand no, it. No, 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 Please no. no. <laughs> I don't understand it, and I don't think I will until I get an NFT to actually be like, oh, this is, this is what this is. I need things that don't exist that cost money. <laughs> I can sell this thing that I bought that doesn't exist, but I can sell it to someone else who wants it even more I want that because thing. it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's all of it. You don't exist. <laughs> I, I have Bitcoin, too, so... Uh, I don't know what I do with it. It just sits there. So, and it goes up and down every day. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like owning the ocean. <laughs> you just sit back and watch it. So we don't really have any uh, old, old one. I mean, uh, what Rick Alvarez is probably the only G1 specific. Uh, you mean Bob Budiansky? Bob Budiansky. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Brain no work good after eight hours of driving. Um, yeah, so... Usually it's it's a chock full of things, and you hear a lot of them rehashing stuff. It seems like there's a it's a weird mix this time, which I'm sure is COVID related. Mm -hmm. uh, so take advantage of that. Don't uh, don't get you won't get burnt out like you do usually. Because uh, I swear there've been years where you go to one panel, some guy asks this guy this question, and then goes to the next panel and asks the same question to that guy. <laughs> And then literally there's just a line of people asking the same question. So it's going to be a little different this time because it's not all... Hey, all Flint Dilly, which one is Cyclonus? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> which one's red, which one's blue? They ask you all that stuff. Uh. <laughs> uh, the one I was at, he, he actually didn't answer that question. He, I don't think he knew. He's probably answered it the opposite way. <laughs> um, well, that ends that debate then. So. He, he's probably okay, said somebody, the somebody else ask him and watch him say, I don't know, bombshell. <laughs> he's just throwing it every other con. He says the other one. Yeah, I would not put that past him at all. <laughs> He's I mean, that kind of guy. the other thing we failed to mention is the uh, Transformers um, brain no worky late at the night. Uh, Same. The Transformers Hall of Fame mm -hmm. that John Mashita was inducted today, which yep. oh, good I man. think is great uh, that you know he's. He's done so much in the not only in Transformers but everywhere else. For him to get inducted to the Hall of Fame is is amazing. Has uh, Jack Angel been on there yet? They'll probably do that. Soon. Uh, I know Greg Ber Berger is in the uh, the Hall of Fame. I do not know about Jack they Angel. Post him humulus. You the word uh, after someone dies, they usually do that. So like. Mm -hmm. Without even like voting, like you could, so they probably will do that. He just passed uh, what last week? Yeah, I yeah. think it was just this past Tuesday. Was yeah. the word yeah. came out? Yeah. Yep, uh, a couple of my uh, friends, I guess, I put it that way, uh, acquaintances actually were were like talking friends with him. So mm -hmm. they, uh, rest in peace. Uh, I'd hate to end it on a downer there. <laughs> Uh, we lost Robert Stack a while ago, so go Jack Angel. <laughs> yeah. He was the uh, Ultra Magnus, by the way. If anybody didn't know that, he was Ultra Magnus in this show, not the movie. Uh, he just passed last week. You can't deal with that now. <laughs> exactly. I can't deal with it either. Um, you guys good? So let's, I mean, maybe we should, we can... Uh, uh, give some plugs. I don't think we yeah. said, we said our plug podcast away. name, but not where to find us. So. Yep, plug away. <laughs> so yeah, so like I said, I'm uh, I'm on the Transmissions Podcast. You can check that out at transmissionspodcast.com. We do two weekly shows, so one focused on toys and one focused on comics and media. So every Wednesday and Friday, 
Uh, and yeah, we can you can find us on all the podcast uh, services: uh, Apple Podcasts, Google, Amazon, Spotify. Uh, I think it's on Facebook now. Uh, but avoid Facebook. You don't have to do Facebook. <laughs> uh, and you know, everywhere everywhere you find a good podcast. Also, we have another show. We uh, we host another show uh, by. Uh, uh, my friend, and also he edits all our shows, so he's a, he's a really good friend, uh, Mike Ordway, who does a show that's a Transformers live play RPG podcast. So, you know, get a group of, play, group of people playing a tabletop RPG podcast, but it's all Transformers focused, and that is called Empire of Rust. So you can go to, hey, <laughs> transmissionspodcast.com slash rust and uh, check that out. So, and, you know, and is he... Mike is here, uh, not here in the room, but he is here at the show. So I have not seen Dr. Uh, Pants either. And there was... uh, I think he's coming tomorrow, so he'll be here. <laughs> got a whole bunch of people coming here. But, yeah, so check those out. Uh, it's all at transmissionspodcast.com, so you can find everything there. Thanks. Josh? And more than meets the ear, you can find on Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, Anchor, uh, iTunes. I, I just push a button and it publishes a lot of places. Uh, but you can you can find us on Twitter at mtmtear, and also we have like a weird website called a link tree, which is linkter.ee slash mtmtear podcast, and that has links to like all of the different places where you can hear us, and then a link to where you can legally. Watch Transformers Cybertron on 2B TV, which is where half of the people watch it, I watch it on DVD, and then laugh at the, laugh at the other ones who are watching the 2B TV version that has the weird dubbing errors that were fixed on the DVDs. I've, I've got another 20 episodes of Energon left, and then I will be starting that and listening to your podcast at the same time. So. You, you have 20 episodes of Energon that you have to watch, and you have watched... Like twenty some episodes already. Yes, I have done other things while I was doing that. I was not like glued to the. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, so this is the thing. I actually loved it when it was out, but it must have just been like in one ear out the other because that that show is. I was a literal child and I loved it, and then I tried to rewatch it a few years ago, and then I'm just like, child Josh, why? Yeah, both of those. Why did you like this? Both of those first two are are, uh, are not a good <laughs> watch to like. Um, you can watch an episode here or there. Oh, this is neat. You try to blitz them? No, <laughs> no binging the Unicron trilogy. It's a doctors do not recommend it. Uh, <laughs> and I guess so. The easiest place to go to uh, see Radio Free Cybertron TF Radio dot net. We have weekly updates, uh, daily updates. When our Hasbro drops news, we put it on there. So it's just like any other uh, Transformers website where you're going to get your latest news. Our podcast is live every Wednesday, and then it gets recorded and dropped everywhere you can imagine podcasts to be. Uh, we are a podcasting network, so there are multiple podcasts other than just Radio Free Cybertron. Um, I have my own uh, if you go to tfradio.net slash reviews you can see uh, a bunch of my uh, figure reviews for the older figures I haven't done any recent reviews lately just because of work constraints uh, and you can follow me on Twitter if any of you are Twitter people at diecast2 on Twitter uh, that's that's my favorite place to talk Transformers. That, that's pretty much the Transformer. The T for Twitter stands for Transformer. Yeah. It's, everybody does that there. I don't know. I'm, I'm on Instagram primarily, and when I want to talk to someone about Transformers, I have to open a different app. Uh, it's, it's different. Well, I don't go on Facebook. I hear Facebook is now a spirit Halloween. Uh, <laughs> Because that's apparently what it happens is, when is. you close for a couple hours, is it becomes a spirit Halloween. <laughs> um, but yeah, I learned, I learned Twitter uh, just for the podcast and for the show, so that's why it's always been nothing but Transformers. How, how long are you guys running? Uh, how long have we been on Twitter, or how long? How long have you guys been doing the podcast, like... Before podcast was a word, I think. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was uh, Brian, the uh, the owner, Brian 
uh, Kilby was doing it before podcasts were a thing. I mean, they used to actually like manually call each other on a regular landline phone and record something and, and put it on an MP3. It was, it was before they even had the word podcast. Uh, uh, alt toys, transformers, they talk about it all the time. I didn't even know about it. I, I was on the internet looking at things I shouldn't have been when I was, when I was that age. Wait, would you all uh, be doing this on floppy disks or something? What's that? You, we, you, and you and you did all this on floppy disks, right? No, no, they did it on they did it on digital media, but it was like it was like Real Player when Real Player was really a, a like out. popular. Ah, when, and when you had to walk uphill in the snow both ways to school. Yeah, yes, without without shoes or wrong fitting shoes or or whatever whatever your uphill battle was at that time. Josh, how long have you been doing hmm? your podcast? How many episodes you had? How, how long have we been podcasting? Yeah. Uh, it's October, so about 10 months, roughly. 10 months, not even a year. Yeah, we, ha- we, have, babies. we, have, we haven't even been going podcasts. a year yet. We've just put out our 10th episode, if I can count correctly. Yeah, yeah. And Charles, what's your count? Uh, Transmissions just had its 8th anniversary in August, so we're, uh, we're going strong. We're at episode 456, and 457 will be out next Wednesday, so... Uh, We're... How long has Empire of Rust been out? Empire of Rust uh, 61 is coming out this Monday. So, uh, they, you know. <laughs> hey, I was on there too. I forgot about that. I'm, I'm on a bunch of podcasts. I have no uh, control over my life to be on my own. Um, I'm Alpha Magnus, A L P H A M A G N U S. I have to say that if because people ask me later how to spell that. I don't know why it's so difficult. Um, as I said, I have a booth. Uh, check me out. Come bug me tomorrow. Buy stuff or don't. I don't. I'm just here to hang, and I don't have to walk around this year. People got to come to me. Um, what's up next? The opening ceremonies. Yep. yep. Opening yeah. ceremonies at eight o'clock. Thank you guys for coming to the podcast panel. We really appreciate it. I guess we'll get started. So this is the final panel of TFCon Baltimore 2021. Uh, so yeah, this is our podcaster roundtable wrap-up of the show, I guess. So uh, yeah, thanks uh, to TFCon for letting us ramble here. And uh, you know, we'll record it and then put it up on our wall, our respective podcast feeds, if, if you know, anyone listens to that. So uh, I am Charles, a.k.a. Big C. I'm the host of the Transmissions Podcast. That's at transmissionspodcast.com. And uh, we've got a couple other podcasters up here on the show, so introduce yourself. So I'm uh, Mike. I am one of the guest hosts on Transmissions, and I run the Empire of Rust, uh, the only Transformers RPG role-playing game podcast out there, first and only. (laughs) And uh, hi, guys. I am Trish. I am part of the More Than Meets the Ear podcast for relatively new And our spiel currently is that we are watching Transformers Cybertron and discussing its merits, its detriments, and generally just chaos ensues. We never stay on topic for very long, but you know. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. All right. So we're all very happy to be back at TFCon. Uh, I know uh, it's, it's been... A bit of a you know a bit of a rough couple of years for everyone. Uh, you know we're happy to be back together. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of masks, but I am happy to see everyone wearing masks so that keeping everyone safe. That's you know that's awesome. I think the the weekend went really well and people were really uh, really diligent with that. So that was awesome, uh, and it was just great to see everyone. You know, like. There's a lot of, you know, for Transformers fan community, we, it's a lot, it's very much online, so you don't tend to see the people you interact with uh, in person very often, so it's just great to be back in person with, you know, a bunch of friends uh, you've made and, and, you know, be able to interact with them and, and hang out with them. So that, that was my favorite part of TFCon, just getting this, to see people I, I hadn't seen in a long time. And, and, and then, you know, just seeing all the awesome Transformer toys on the show and, and trying to figure out if my wallet could handle all the, all the different <laughs> figures there. So, uh, Trish, maybe we start with you. What, what, was, uh, what were your high points of the con? Oh, wow. 
there were a lot. So I actually helped volunteer for the con. So I spent most of the day, um, most of the days, wrangling guests and helping make sure everything ran relatively accordingly. But um, definitely my favorite part was shopping, as much as my wallet disagrees, and <laughs> meeting friends who, actually, the members of my podcast, we'd never met each other in person before. And so Josh, the guy who brought us all together, I think he ho- was on this panel on Friday. And so I got to see him for the first time, got to see Susan, she's another member of our podcast. And so it was really fun to see all these people who I met during the pandemic when we did the cons online, and met through the Discord channels and stuff in person for the first time. So that was, that was probably definitely my favorite part upon further consideration. Go ahead, Mike. I'd have to echo a lot of that. Uh, just seeing people whom we haven't seen in it's like four or five years, that was, was very, very fun. Uh, yeah, just, just being able to, to reconnect and get in touch with everyone, that I think is the, uh, the highlight of the con for me. Like I haven't seen... Charles here since uh, 2016, I think. So, fun times. Yeah, I mean, the, the, recording a podcast remotely, you see each other on a video screen. I mean, I, I'm sure everyone is quite familiar with Zoom calls these days. So, uh, but yeah, but yeah, f- five years to see you know, to see us in person. It's a long wait. So, yeah. All right, well, uh, any huge, uh, any big toy finds that you got this year? So I, I know Mike has a story, so maybe I'll, I'll ask you to tell your story about some, some of the cool <laughs> finds you got. I've been looking for a, a bunch of like older Combiner Wars limbs, and I've just had tough times with all the prices that have like, not come down in price at all. And, and yeah, so they, they found a couple, because I'm building this like my own custom combiner for it, so I found a couple of those, happy about that, and I found uh, Netflix Soundwave for a, uh, for a deal, so that was nice. Never saw him in stores, ever. <laughs> so always a good time when you find a figure that you have never seen before. Trish, how about you? Well, because I was volunteering so much, I didn't get the chance to buy a lot of toys, but my favorite find of the weekend was I primarily collect uh, Transformers front. Transformers Prime figures. It has been a long weekend. Um, And so collecting um, the Japanese exclusives has always been a little bit out of my reach. But this time around, I actually managed to find, for a very reasonable price, a Transformers Japanese exclusive um, Air Vehicon General mint in sealed box. So that was very a very fun find for me. And that's one that I am going to definitely use to flush out my collection. Very, very fun. That's a nice find. I was not expecting it because I've looked at multiple conventions. I was not expecting to see it here, and it was just sitting on the box. I got it for a great deal, so I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> well, I did get that uh, Mastermind Creations Mentis, the, uh, the rung figure, so I was, I was very happy to be able to snag that. Uh, I was, I was kind of salivating over that on Friday, uh, seeing, you know, seeing it. And uh, I was I was hoping I'd be able to get one. So I had had some friends who uh, who are had booths, so they were able to to help me out and, and pick one up for me. So I was very happy to do that. Uh, also happy to get one for my uh, my podcast co-host Daryl, who couldn't be here. He's he's Canadian and and basically had to cancel his trip at the last minute because they still haven't opened the border. So that was uh, disappointing for him to uh, couldn't make it. But uh, you know hope. Hopefully, I mean, I'm, de- I'm definitely sure he'll be going to TFCon Toronto. So if anyone's going to TFCon Toronto uh, in December, uh, look out for Daryl, uh, another transmissions guy. He'll be wearing a shirt probably similar to this, <laughs> if, you're, if you're curious. Um, I also managed to get an uh, uh, Origins Bumblebee. I know that's a, that's a figure that's, that's pretty much out on Target, but I couldn't find it anywhere, so I was happy to, to be able to get it here. I did pay a little bit extra for it, unfortunately, but... Uh, you know, I was happy to happy to find it. So yeah. Uh, anyone uh, have uh, you know have fun going to the parts parties in the um, in the evenings? Anyone uh, check those out? Anyone in the audience or anyone here? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a couple. I actually found one on Friday night. I've been here since Monday, so I found one on Friday night. I went to a couple last night, but I didn't really find anything. It was just fun to hang out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can agree. Yeah. We, uh, we took a, a trip down 
all the hallways in the, in the hotel. <laughs> there was a, yeah, there was some stuff going on. There were some other parties going on too, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit, it's always a bit weird because, you know, they, it's, uh, you're, you're going to strangers' rooms, you know, the question is always, are, are you going to murder them or are they going to murder you? So, you know, it's a, <laughs> it's a, but no, everyone, everyone just wants to get, just wants to have fun and, and talk toys and, and buy and sell toys. So, no murders happened, at least I didn't witness any, so. <laughs> <laughs> So um, yeah, maybe we can make this a, a little interactive, too. I mean, uh, uh, there's not that many people here hanging out. Thank, thanks, guys, for coming. Uh, so what, you know, any guys talk about, do you guys have uh, high points of the show that you guys want to talk about or, uh, you know, that you uh, enjoyed in particular? Anyone at all? Go ahead. Were you guys able to catch the, uh, the legacy reveals? Yeah, um, so we, we did, we, uh, so I was driving in my car, as I was driving down to Baltimore <laughs> while that was happening, and uh, yeah, you know, just listening on my phone and, uh, and got to see the pictures afterwards, yeah, so for me, I don't know, maybe I, I, I it, 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 nothing really grabbed me too much, like just, uh, it was, it was nice to see them kind of going to do a range of different, uh, of different uh, toy lines and, and different eras, so Hopefully, capturing uh, you know both the older fans and the younger fans who are who are interested. But uh, I guess nothing nothing grabbed me in particular. I did um, I did like the uh, the little accessories that come with the um, the War for Cybertron Galvatron. The I guess the reformatted Galvatron. But yeah, that th those are for my you know for my Unicron that I <laughs> that I got. So like those those are nice. But I actually didn't want the Galvatron figures. I just want the little the little. <laughs> Little bits and nothing else. <laughs> what did you guys think? Uh, well, I I didn't see the live stream as it was happening, but I went on Hasbro Pulse afterwards and looked those up. I will be getting the the Galvatron, and I think the figure's pretty cool. And obviously, I need it because I I have a Unicron too, and so I need the head. <laughs> but other than that. Um, I was kind of disappointed with what they did with the figures who were supposed to be reminiscent of the Prime line just because I liked the original Prime figures and thought they were just going to kind of go and make them better, make them a little more flushed out, make their articulation better. And they kind of went and like changed a bunch of stuff. And I wasn't a huge fan of that. But other than the Galvatron, yeah, nothing, nothing really snagged my attention. But I, I will be getting him because he looks really cool. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't catch it uh, live, but I, I saw like, all the reveals as soon as we, we got here and everything. So uh, I, I will echo you a little bit on that. Uh, I think the, the Legacy series is just going to end up being very polarizing to a lot of people. You're either going to just say, yeah, this is, this is great, keep them coming, or, or you're going to hate it. I, I don't think there's a lot of middle ground for this. Uh, that being said, I do love. I do like the look of the Laser Prime. I'm probably gonna skip it and wait till the the black repaint, the Scourge repaint they do. That'd be cool. So, but yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting to see if they kind of continue that look throughout the entire line of that. So, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, how was uh, how was the filming? I was uh, just to get away from just to slightly get away from transformers. Uh, I think the most exciting thing that I saw was that uh, I have last gas driver. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, if we're deviating from uh, Transformers, I don't know if they revealed this on the live, but I heard from somebody that they're planning on doing a one-to-one -one proton pack, and so I, I am all down for that. So <laughs> I would totally get that. Who doesn't want a one-to-one -one proton pack? Mm, I mean, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, no, I'm totally, totally loving that. The sound, I just hope they do it right, and that it's not, you know, three bajillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Anyone else have any thoughts on the show? In general? Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question. Um, any thoughts on the third party? 
Oh, the third party reveals. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, my brain had to translate that for a second because <laughs> I can't hear it from so far away. Uh, yeah, I we seem to have lost our assistant with the uh, with the microphone, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even, I wasn't really, because I was volunteering, I didn't really see what the third party reveals were, but I'm sure there were some pretty cool ones. I, went, I was at like all the booths and stuff, but I, I didn't really see the reveals when they happened, so. Uh, Chosen Prime had the, the, uh, the stuff on the left hand side display case, that was the majority of the. Oh, like, it, the, some of that stuff, stuff was gorgeous, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there was a couple of things that I was I was missing from it. Like I really wish they, uh, uh, Fans Toys really spoke about the Fort Max coming out. So I wish they talked about that, which unfortunate. Uh, and Planet X, I wish they did a little bit more as well. Like we got the uh, the that sludge uh, like silhouette, and that's cool and everything. But I would love to see a bit more of that. Uh, but the uh, like all of like the legend size stuff that they they released all really really looks good. It's it's all beautiful stuff. Yeah, yeah I may have a, a slight problem with the legends. I love them so much, <laughs> and I want to just buy all of them. And I was trying not to buy all of the seekers and, and new little guys. But they're so small; they just fit in your pocket. But I, I know that's the problem. They're so cute. That's why they're so dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Very dangerous. Uh, Transformers in general is dangerous because we have such great figures. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fan of the Legends, uh, the Legends class figures too. But yeah, it's that's a slippery slope. You can and mm-hmm. they're you know it's all it's just thirty dollars. But then you buy five of them, and then, you know, and then it's, it's not thirty dollars <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, the IDW. Uh, I guess Grimlock is what well, they already revealed. But yeah, I'm I'm curious what that sludge is going to look like, uh, and um, and I guess that means they're going to do all the Dinobots too. So you know, l- I'm looking forward to that. But I, I yeah, I, I would have liked to see a an actual reveal rather than just the the silhouette. But um, it felt. I mean, it, it it felt like. I mean, it's probably just because of production and and um, you know issues of ramping up in factories and all that stuff it, it did feel it feel it felt a little light this time that because usually the third party panel will last the full hour or 45 minutes and and they they wrapped it up in in 30 minutes so um yeah we did we didn't see a lot but um yeah in particular the legends class stuff I, I, that's what i would be most interested in so yeah no oh, go ahead Okay, um, so the volunteering, it was, it was really fun. I had a great time doing it. The only thing they cover is admission. So you get, if you volunteer, you kind of get, you get you know, your pass for the weekend. Um, it does get you the, the early admission if you're not on shift when it starts in the morning. And I, I really enjoy being able to, like, you get to know everybody a lot better. And you get to know, like, the staff of the con, and you get to know some of the vendors better. And uh, let's see, what, what else was in your question? Perks. Perks? Eh, I, don't, I don't know if you really get as many perks as far as you kind of get to know people. And then, you know, you, when the more you know people, the more... And, and it gives you lots of opportunities for growth in, like, the volunteering. Like, I... This is my first time volunteering for TFCon. And because we were a little bit short-staffed, um, I got to help one of the actors table. So I was, I was with um, Xavier Cadeau all weekend because we were a little short-staffed. So as long as you're, you know, punctual and reliable, they do tend to, to help, you know, you get to do more stuff. The more accountable you are and if you're willing to help out, you know, they're willing to help you out and you get, you know, a little bit better staff. I don't really say better, different staff positions, you know, than someone who's going to be late and they can't rely on and people have to stay on their shift longer. But it definitely was a great time. I'm exhausted, <laughs> but it was a great time. I believe you have to be staff for that to happen. And once you're, once you, I, as far as I'm aware of how it happens, 
if you volunteer a few times and you make yourself reliably consistent, then they invite you on to staff. And at that point, I, I don't quote me on this, I believe that's when they start covering stuff like that. But yeah, don't quote me on any of that. I'm guessing based on what I've heard. <laughs> How long are your uh, shifts? So they ask for four-hour shifts. Um, it's one hour each shift, and then you can like move around. But p it's pretty much whatever they can get, they'll take. Like I was supposed to be scheduled for two hours on Sunday, and then I think I had five hours on Saturday. It ended up being all day, all the two days, because I ended up tabling. But I know some of the volunteers were only able to come yesterday, and some of them were only able to be here today. So they're very, very flexible. They appreciate any help that they can get. Cool. Yeah, it was very fun. All right. Well, uh, I know it's uh, it's late. It's the end of the day, so maybe we can uh, we'll we'll wrap things up here. Thanks everyone for coming out. Uh, if I hope you guys listen to podcasts. If you're interested, uh, as I said earlier, uh, I'm on the Transmissions Podcast. That's at transmissionspodcast.com. Uh, we do two shows every week. Uh, one talks about all about toys, one all about comics. And we are also hosts of the Empire of Rust podcast, which Mike can talk about. Yep, so I guess host on transmissions uh, once or twice a month or so, give or take. <laughs> and I run the Empire of Rust uh, RPG podcast, again, the world's first and only Transformers RPG podcast. Uh, transmissions, uh, transmissionspodcast.com slash rust or just... Go to any podcast feed that you have, Google, Apple, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, anywhere you go, and just search for Empire of Rust. Trish, yeah, and so I'm, once again, I'm Trish. I'm with More Than Meets the Ear. Currently, we are going over Transformer Cybertron. It's not actually what we do. It's mostly chaos. Uh, we talk about whatever comes to mind. We make bad jokes, and there's usually at least one song that happens. Sometimes it's Veggie Tales, sometimes it's Disney. You never know how it's going to go. And we are on all podcast platforms. And we are, I believe, at MTMT Ear. And then on Facebook, we are More Than Meets the Ear podcast. Twitter, it's at MTMT Ear. And that should be it. We're, we're relatively easy to find, especially if you go on Facebook. We have a link to our link tree, which can get you everywhere. All right. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. You mentioned an art. There is one coming out. Uh, that's coming out in March, April or so, give or take, uh, from Renegade Games. And we're hoping to do something with, uh, with that once it comes out. Uh, but as of right now, it is uh, a Starfinder system with like a Mechamorphosis thing on top of it with our own homebrew stuff on top of that. <laughs> Yeah, so you can actually check it out if you join our Discord, the Transmissions Podcast Discord. Uh, we have an Empire of Rust channel there and actually links to the rule set that they use for the Empire of Rust uh, game. So you can, you can check that out and also talk to uh, other listeners and, uh, and the cast members on the show. So, yep. yeah. And yeah, if you, to go to that, go to transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. And that's uh, where you can find it. We're not that fancy yet. We're just a baby podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got to start somewhere. So, <laughs> From what I'm told, it's super easy. <laughs> I don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't do it either. I just come on when Josh tells us to. And I'm, I'm usually the one that's late because fashionably late. You've got to make an entrance every time. So, <laughs> but yeah, thanks for coming out, guys. It was a yeah. great weekend. I got to get to know some of you. And we, we did record this, so hopefully we'll be able to publish this on all our podcast feeds. So uh, tell your friends if they want to listen or are curious about podcasts, you know, to check it out. So that'll probably be coming up this week or next week. So Is anyone going to be at the con in Burbank in March? No one? All right, that's fine. That's cool. That's my home turf, so I'll be out there. So <laughs> at the very least, you'll see me out there. I'll probably be volunteering again because it was fun. That, is, that Saturday is my birthday, so... 
Maybe, if I can convince my wife to make it a birthday present. Well, it we'll is L.A., and the last TFCon Burbank we had was humongous. I think there were like 18 guests or something. Like, it was huge. And so hopefully they can top it this year. I know yeah. a couple of actors have, have already been reaching out about wanting to be... <laughs> they kept reaching out to me. I'm like, guys, I don't know. I'm not with TFCon. Um, but, yeah, so it should be a great time for everybody, and there should be quite a decent amount of, of guests there. Mm-hmm. So come, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for uh, for sticking around for as long as you did. Yeah, thanks, yeah. guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode of Transmissions. If you'd like to join the conversation, travel to our Discord channel at transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. Want some cool transmission swag? Feast your eyes on our transmissions gear at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. If you'd like to support our podcast, go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support or tell your friends about our show. We'll see you next time. Transmissions.